probably been 15 years or more since I built this contraption for the canoe. And the idea was to be able to have it very stable with an outboard motor on so that you didn't end up tipping over. And at the same time, I wanted something that I didn't have to permanently damage the canoe by drilling holes in it or putting hardware on the canoe. So this thing all just clamps together in pieces and it can be clamped onto the canoe, taken off the canoe, then you can use the canoe like a regular canoe and there's there's nothing that gets in your way as a result of having the outriggers built. So we've got a setup a bit like this and I also am going to put a mount for the motor on the back so that that's going to be the same way. It just clamps on and off. All right, these are outriggers that are basically made from sewer pipe. The first set I built were, were much longer and the pipe was bigger diameter. And they were so long and cumbersome that they ended up, when you weren't using the motor, they ended up being in your way. So this is just a hardware bracket, uh, a mending plate that you would buy in a hardware store and a couple of hose clamps on both ends. And then this is electrical conduit that I pinched the ends on and bent it with a conduit bender. And then you put a hole in here, I, I take it? Put a hole in it so that it lines up with the hole in these brackets. You just slide up there. What are you putting in? This is a little pin with holes in it, clevis pin. Okay, so one on this side, one on this side. And you have to know which one's which? Yes, they're, they're built slightly different in size. So the one for the front is a little bit different in size from the one in the back. Right. The conduit's mounted to the pieces of wood. And then there's bolts and screw-on knobs underneath. Right now, this is just a thing that I made to help keep the water from the motor when it's running from splashing too much water into the canoe in the back. Slides back here, and we've got a knob underneath that tightens up. And is that where the motor goes? No, it sits behind where the motor is going to be. So, how long would you say it takes to put it together? It depends on how good I feel on any given day. But <laughs> normally, if every everything goes right and uh, bolts haven't gotten too rusted, and I forgot to lube them. It takes about 15 minutes max to put it together. And again, it's made with two pieces of steel and then these threaded knobs that will lock it in place once it's where I need it to be. Just move the boat to the water. Now you got the motor. What do you got here? I have a Honda four stroke, two horsepower, gasoline outboard. This is going to clamp onto the bracket. And this is the safety line. In the event that you didn't put it together right or you under designed the strength of it when your motor falls off the canoe you don't lose it to the bottom of whatever you're boating in i don't think i want to take it out in seven foot waves but it's been out in two two and a half foot waves already where we've run rapids with it we've had it out in the bays when it's windy we've had it on round valley reservoir to which you can attest to when it was windy. Yes, with the white caps. So um, at this point, we're ready to get in and go. Everything working good? It's working good. Normally when I first started up, once I've started the engine and put torque on the bracket, I usually check the 
bolts again to make sure that they're tightened up. But we're ready to go. And we also always bring paddles, right? We always bring paddles in case we decide to shut the engine off and paddle through a spot that's shallow or tight. But with the outriggers, the boat, it's almost impossible to tip it. Even though they don't look that big, they provide enough flotation to keep it from, from leaning too hard. And when I solo with the boat, I can even take my hands off the motor and actually steer it just by leaning and dipping one outrigger tip in the water versus the other. And you can actually slalom with it if you wanted to, no hands. Which is kind of fun. Goof, little goofy, but fun. Canoe leaves very little wake at low speeds, which is nice doesn't disturb the wildlife Sorry, too badly or the other boaters. Engine is air cooled rather than water cooled. So the exhaust exhausts into the water, but it does get a little loud at, at higher speeds for being such a small motor. So, I'm going to stand up. You'll see. Standing up. Okay, I really wasn't showing off. I just wanted to show you how stable the boat was. So, a lot of times, um, I just stick my feet up and lean back. A lot of times, I'll be holding the dog. So, like I said, it's very stable. Got the gas off to the motor. So, right now, I'm just letting it burn the rest of the gas that's in the carburetor until the carburetor runs dry and then it'll shut itself off. Unfortunately, the original motor mount that I built for this motor got destroyed trying to launch it in some heavy winds up in Round Valley Reservoir. So I've since built this motor mount. The first one was a little too flimsy, so I went with a heavier piece of steel, which I thought would be enough to do the trick, but obviously I gotta look at it a little more thoroughly. That metal it. right there that's bowed? Yeah, the metal where the boat is hanging over the side is is bending and I want it to be straighter. And not have as much. Did you say flex. this kicks up a lot of water on you? Yeah, it does. I have a solution to that, I just haven't implemented it yet. An umbrella? No, but <laughs> sort of like the uh, the things that they put on bird feeders so the squirrels can't climb the poles. It'll be some sort of like look like an umbrella but it'll go around the motor shaft to keep the water from going up the shaft and getting in i usually help take this stuff off but i have a more important job now get out of four inch pipe they're mounted on the canoe the board sits on top of the boat and this goes underneath of the aluminum gunnel, and then when you tighten this up, it locks it in place. And that's all that does. So is that big sheet of metal like a washer, basically? Basically, yeah, okay. except it gives it a little more surface area and a little more grab. So that is basically the gear. It's what? One, two, three, four, five. Six, six pieces plus the motor. Six pieces plus the motor. There is a link in the bottom, in the description page to uh, the engine. I'll get a close up of the engine. It is a Honda four stroke. And there it is, that's all the gear. This is Rick in Round Valley Reservoir. It's nice and still and calm, but ironically the night before it was really rough. That's where he said he actually broke the mount for his motor. But there were waves coming over the bow of the boat. It was so bad. There was actually like white caps coming in. So that was Round Valley Reservoir. And this next one, we are actually heading out to the Delaware River. That is, I believe, the Ben Franklin Bridge from New Jersey to Philadelphia or Pennsylvania. And this water is rough. It looks pretty calm, okay, but it really isn't. It's extremely rough. And there's big ships out there and towboats, so I was more than happy to get back and not go out there. That probably wasn't the brightest place to put the boat, but we were just playing around. Like this video, let's have a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Gotta ring that bell. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.
that's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. You all come back now, you hear? Thank you.